Hi, and welcome back to MyExcelOnline.com. Today, we are going to go over Microsoft Word. So if you want to think of our Microsoft Office series overall, we are going to go through each application with probably a few lessons for each application. So this is part one of Microsoft Word. And for this lesson, we would like to just give you a brief overview of some of the features inside of Microsoft Word. So how do you start Word on your computer? Well, there are a couple options. First, if you have the icon right here, already pinned to your taskbar, you can just click on that button. If you don't see this down there, you can go over here to the search bar and just type Word. And it should appear up here, and you can click on that icon. So once you're inside Microsoft Word, you have a lot of options in here. The first option is to start with a blank document, which is most likely what you want to do. So you have several options over here on the left. You have the home screen, new, open, account, feedback, and options. Home is selected by default. Under recent, our recent documents have been opened. Under pinned is any document that you want to often open. So these would be very frequently used files. And the way you get them in the pinned list is by going to recent and clicking this pin right here. And then when you go back to the home button, go back to pinned, you will see that document now resides under the pinned list. Shared with me will be any documents that have been shared with you over OneDrive. And we'll talk about OneDrive more extensively in the future. If you go to new, you can either select a blank document or you can look through all of these templates down here that Microsoft Word has provided for you. These templates allow you to quickly begin a resume or begin a calendar or begin a lot of other frequently used documents such as brochures and reports. And if you go to the open menu, you can see a lot of files that you have opened recently, more so than you can see on the home screen. So if you go to browse, you'll be able to find a document on your computer. And if you go to OneDrive, you'll be able to see any kind of documents that you've shared with everyone else or people have shared with you. And then account tells you information about your Microsoft Office subscription and options give you different options for setting defaults for Microsoft Word, but we're not going to go into that today. So I'm just going to hit cancel and go back to file and click new and click blank document. All of those options can be found here on the file tab. If I click on that and then I click this back arrow, I will go back to Microsoft Word. So that's a way for me to toggle back and forth between some of my file options. I have some other options such as save, where I can save this file, but I haven't saved this file yet. So save as will come up by default and I can choose where I want to save this file. I can go to print, which will allow me to print my document, but nothing is on there yet. I can go to export, which will allow me to export my document to a PDF, and we will talk more extensively about that in a future lesson. Or I can hit close, and I can close this document. But for now, I'm going to hit the back arrow and go back to Microsoft Word. So those are some of the most used options under File. But now if I click the Home tab, you will see that the Home ribbon comes up, and I have a lot of options here. So now I have some text in my Word document. If you would like to be able to see this more close up, you can go to View, Zoom, and change this to, let's say, 200% for now, so that you can see more close up what I am doing with all of these options on the Home tab. So I'm going to go back to the Home tab, and let's take the word the. If I double click with my mouse on any word, I will select the entire word. And so what I want to do now is just hit this B right here to bold my text. If I double click on the next word and I hit I, I can italicize. And if I double click on brown, I can underline. Those are your three options that you have right here. If I double click on Fox and I click this button, I can strike through. So if you're editing someone else's paper, but you want to leave what they had originally put in the text, you can use the strike through. I can also change the color of my font. And if I don't like just red, I can pick any of these other colors in here, or I can go to more colors and I can pick a more custom color. If I know the RGB code or if I know the hex code, I can change to that exact color. I can also highlight all of my text and I can center it or right justify it or left justify it. I can also change the spacing when I have paragraphs right here. I can add bulleted points. I can add number points. I can even make this an outline if I have multiple lines on here. With this button, you can indent or you can outdent. You can also highlight your text. And over here, you can dictate a new sentence if you would like. So I'm going to start a new line and dictate, I am now watching a My Excel video. 
and then you can click dictate again to finish your dictation. So those are some of the options on the home ribbon. If you are liking this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to get new weekly Microsoft Office tips. Next, let's go over to the insert ribbon. On the insert ribbon, there are a couple options I would like to review for you here. First of all, how to insert a table. In Word, you can insert a table of information so that all of your rows and columns line up and are formatted really well. So let's just insert a 3x3 table here for now. And let's just say this is a name, this is a phone number, and this is an email address. Now I can format the table in the same way that I was formatting my text above. So if I highlight these cells and I go back to home, I can center those, I can bold those, I can underline those. But here's one thing I do want to show you. If I highlight my table and I go to this button right here, I go down here to borders and shading. So say I want the border all around my table to be really thick. I can make the line thicker and then I can hit box and hit OK and my table has become very, very thick. If I go back to those options and go back to border and shading, I can take my inside lines and make those a little bit bigger as well by clicking on the middle lines right here and saying OK. So this button up here allows you to change the borders on your table. I can also go back to borders and shading and I can change the color of my borders. First I would select the color here and let's make our border a little bit thinner and we can just say all and this will change all of the borders and say OK. And you can see that all of my borders and my table have been updated. I can also highlight a row and go back to borders and shading. Click on the shading tab and allow the fill to be a really light fill here and say OK. I would use this if I wanted to highlight a certain row of information for the reader. So going back to the insert ribbon, there's other objects that I can insert. I'm going to click below my table and insert a picture this time and I'm just going to insert a stock image and choose this one and say insert. And now I have an image on my screen. And the image looks large. If I hover my mouse over here and get the diagonal mouse change, I can slide it to be a little bit smaller and resize it to be where I want it to be on the page. I could also go back to home and I could center it on my page. But going back to insert, one more thing I would like to show you is that you can insert page numbers on your document by going to bottom of page or top of page, whatever your preference is for your page number. For now, I'm just going to do it on the top so that you can see it. And then I can make my page number be on the left, centered, or on the right. Let's just do on the right for now. So you will see that my page number appears, but when I hit close header and footer, I can scroll up and see the page number, but I can't edit it until I go back into the insert and go back to my header and hit edit header. And then I can edit once again. So the header in this case is treated separately from the rest of the document and has a different way of editing it. Next, let's review the layout ribbon. On the layout, you can change the size of your margins of your page by clicking here. The normal setting is one inch all around, but you can also customize those margins and make them whatever size you would like by hitting customize by typing in the top, the left, the bottom, and the right margins manually right here. You can change the orientation of your page from portrait to landscape. You can also change the size of your paper here. Here's one that is used often. Sometimes you may want to insert a page break and have information print on a different page. Let's say I would like a page break before my table. I'm going to select my table, go up to breaks, and hit page. And you can see, if I scroll down, that the page break is right here and you can see that my table has moved to a separate page. Sometimes that's very useful when you have one sentence appearing on the bottom of a document that you would prefer for it to go over onto the next page. But be careful with that because as you add words to your page, the page break will remain in place and your text may spill over onto another page yet leave the page break and it might not look right. So sometimes you may want to remove a page break. Next, I would like to go over the review ribbon. There's a couple functions on here that are very useful when you are working with Microsoft Word. Let's say I want to make my paper sound a little more exciting and I don't like the word lazy. I would like to use something else that sounded a little more emphatic. If I double click on the word lazy and I go up to thesaurus, I can now see different words that I could be using here. So let's look at the word indolent, hit this down arrow and click insert. 
So you can see that I've instantly inserted a synonym in place of the word lazy. From this ribbon, I can also click word count and see how many words I have on this page. In the status bar, you can see how many words that you have on your page as well. On the view tab, which we first looked at, you can zoom in and out of the document that you are working with. You can also quick multiple pages to see how many pages you have within your document and get a rough idea of what it's going to look like when you print it out. You can also switch windows to any other open documents that you may have open at this time. Or, for a shortcut on that, you can press Alt-Tab on your keyboard and switch between Word documents as well. And to go back to the regular view that we've been working with, just click one page again and click on Zoom and go back to the 200% and say OK. One more thing I would like to show you before ending our lesson is up here in the search screen. This is true for all Microsoft Office applications. If you can't remember one of the commands we went over today and you click in here and you type bold, you will see bold appear right here. Instead of having to search for the correct ribbon that it's on, you can just type your command up here of what you would like to do until you get a little more familiar with the environment inside of Microsoft Word. So hopefully that gives you a jump start on learning how to use Microsoft Word. If you have any more questions or any suggestions for videos on Microsoft Word, please leave them in the comments below and we will consider adding them to our list. Hopefully you learned something new today and we look forward to seeing you again next week on our next Microsoft Word lesson. If you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you're really serious about advancing your Microsoft Excel skills so you can stand out from the crowd and get the jobs, promotions and pay rises that you deserve, then click up here and join our Academy online course today.